uh, basically today we're going to do an introduction to roundabouts and one of the re one of the things we really got to think about is signaling All right so if somebody asked you the common question how many directional signals are there on the indicator stick what would your answer be two okay that's incorrect and that is what everybody gets wrong in actual fact there are three directional signals on the indicator it's up for going right it's in the neutral position in other words no signal on for going straight and left signal on for going left so there are three signals okay okay so do you have any idea why it's important to realize that not signaling is also a signal okay the reason for that is the, the no signal is also a signal because it's just as wrong to get it to, it's it's when you're getting to a junction and you're turning left or on a roundabout and you're putting on a no signal People don't know where you're going or they think you're going round the roundabout to the next exit. So you, 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 when you, if you then suddenly exit left and you haven't signaled out of the roundabout, you've actually s signaled incorrectly. You've told people you're going to follow the roundabout round when you're actually not going to be following the roundabout round. So okay. it's really important that when you approach the roundabout that you use the correct signals on the approach and in the roundabout itself so people know exactly where you're going. Okay. Okay, today we are going to deal with um, roundabouts. So we're looking at uh, the um, procedures when we approach a roundabout. That's very important. Now, every time we approach a junction, we know that there is a mirror signal maneuver, an MSM routine that we have to follow. But one of the most important things before we can start the MSM routine is to identify the junction that we are approaching. In other words, where is that junction and what is that junction and there we're looking at whether it is a, a zebra crossing a traffic light control junction a giveaway a stop line and or maybe a roundabout now the, the very important thing that we've got to understand always when we're approaching these junctions we have to identify that we have a pending hazard coming up we then have to check what is going on in other words in our mirrors and the surroundings to see how we're going to deal with that junction. Knowing what it is we're dealing with helps us to try to identify the hazards. Then we have to give the appropriate signal which as we previously said consists of three signals that you have to decide on and then we have to maneuver, adjust our speed, decide whether we have to stop or we don't have to stop. Now obviously when you're approaching roundabouts identifying what roundabout you have to deal with is extremely important. Okay, so we have to know what type of roundabout we're approaching. Now, I've divided roundabouts into three types. I've identified them as three types generally. There are mini roundabouts, open roundabouts and closed roundabouts. And open and closed roundabouts can be divided into two types which are the normal roundabouts and the spiral roundabouts. And spiral roundabouts are relatively new but there are quite a few of them around as well now. And they can come, they can be in an open and closed. Okay, what we're doing is just doing a comparison of the different types of roundabouts, many open and closed roundabouts. How, what, how, how things are different how you approach it, how, what you have to consider when you approach, what your approach signal, entry signal should be, and what the phases of signaling in the roundabouts are. Um, just to give you some sort of idea of how you would do things differently on the approach and in the roundabouts themselves. Okay, in every single roundabout, the, the um, identify mirror signal maneuver is, is, is relevant. Um, the only difference here would be um, obviously in the type of roundabout your maneuver or speed at which you approach that roundabout or when you're coming up to the roundabout line is determined very much first of all by what type of roundabout it is and secondly by what you're approaching on the roundabout itself like for instance in a mini roundabout your approach speed should normally be in second gear uh, provided you can see up the road of the roads leading into the roundabout if it's in a very closed area <coughs> you would naturally probably have to stop and go back to first gear before you go through the roundabout and if you have to give priority to other people you'd have to stop. <coughs> in the open roundabout 
Normally open roundabouts you can see into the roundabout on your approach and second gear approach is good as long as you can drive through. If you can't drive through you just come up to the roundabout, the giveaway line at the roundabout and stop. Closed roundabout, if you're following into a green light you could actually just drive through or if you're in a closed roundabout where you have a slipway or something like that the speed will, the, the, the speed will be determined by that. On, the, on these roundabouts your approach signal is determined uh, is first of all what is important about this is that your each one of these roundabouts sort of determines the approach signal a little bit differently on the mini roundabout you would go in with a signal which is determined by your exit so your exit determines your entry signal um, and it's not the position on the roundabout because you you've only got one signal all the way through you do not change your signal you only have one phase of signaling in a mini roundabout and that signal that you go in with is the signal you exit the roundabout with you do not change it and the reasons for that are twofold the reasons you don't change that signal is because first of all the roundabout is too small for you to change the signal and secondly you can see normally in 99.9% .9 of the cases you can see the exit you are going to and people can see the entry point at which you came in on so they can determine by your entry signal which exit you are going to. On the open roundabout you are necessarily visible your signaling here is um, is determined is determined by your exit but it's also determined by the position the position you take on the roundabout getting to your exit so if you're going to be on the outside lane which will be any exit up to 12 o'clock you'll be going in with no signal and then changing to a left signal at the exit prior to your exit any exits beyond 12 o'clock you would be going in with a right signal and then changing to a left signal in a closed in a closed roundabout it is determined by the lane. In other words, if the lane you're going in with carries you to your exit, then you might not need to signal except on the exit point, just before the exit point. Otherwise, if your lane, your lane, if you have to change lanes and get to the inside of the roundabout, you'd have to signal to the right hold to the inside of the roundabout and then exit at the exit of the thing. So you have three phases of signaling there. This is an entry signal, it is a negotiating signal in the roundabout and then an exit signal. You have to consider three phases of signaling and any obviously in all of in all of these your exit signal is actually always left and then your entry signal could be a left signal which means you're going to the first exit which is the same for all of the roundabouts. If you're going to the first exit it's always your prime prime rule on roundabouts is first exit is left in, left in left in the roundabout and left out of the roundabout so you just carry your left signal all the way through if you're going to the second exit or the third exit your lane positions in the closed roundabout will determine what you do with your signal for us to be able to determine where we're going on roundabouts and also to be able to read road signs generally road signs are read from the bottom up so if you have a road sign in front of you or a leaderboard you would normally be coming in at the lowest point on that road sign okay and in roundabouts we tend to say that you're going to an exit which reflects a time on the cl on the clock so you would be entering at the six o'clock position and maybe we're exiting at the twelve o'clock position which is directly across and that would be there however obviously if you're going to the first exit in this case which is here you would be going out at nine o'clock but we've got exits at eleven and at one o'clock and one at three o'clock as well so it just depends on where you're going what the reference would be so if someone said to you you're going to the exit at three o'clock you would know you need to go all the way around and you would go in with the appropriate signaling and procedures all right so what are we what we are looking at here is we are looking at a simple open roundabout. We've got four junctions coming in with giveaway signs, giveaway signs at each entry point. And the way you identify the open roundabout is basically it's the it's a, it's any roundabout that a car can enter into, obviously with due caution on priority, enter into and go around the roundabout without having to change priority so while the car is on the roundabout it has priority of all 
the roads entering onto the roundabout. That is normally classed as an open roundabout. These roundabouts are normally, sometimes they are only singular laned, but most of the time they have sufficient space for two lanes and they will have an obstruction in the center and there won't be a mini roundabout sign at the entry point to the roundabout. It will just be the signs on the roundabout itself which are normally consist of a round sign with an arrow, blue sign with an arrow and a chevron at the entry point pointing you in the direction that you have to go. Okay, and then obvious, obviously the thing that we've got here is that the cars on the roundabout have priority over the cars coming onto the roundabout. That's an open roundabout. What we're doing is we're looking at open roundabouts and just what the different positions are that you take up and what your different approaches are to those. So what we will be looking at is the entry signal. In other words, what's your entry signal depending on your exit? What is the position you have to take and what signal would you be using when you are on the roundabout and then obviously your exit signal. All right, so in the prime rule, in other words, if you're going to the first exit, doesn't matter where that exit is, if you're going to the first exit, you're going on the left, your position on the roundabout is left and you keep your signal left, so your approach and entry signal is left, your position on the roundabout is left, and while you're in the roundabout, you will signal left at the exit prior to your exit, because that's the same for all, the, all of them. So in actual fact, you were just going with your left signal, keep to the left, and exit with your left signal. And that would be if you were going to the first exit. If your exit is greater, is less than, sorry, if your exit is less than or equal to 12 o'clock, you go in with your zero signal, okay, on the left hand side and you keep left through the roundabout, you keep left on the left lane and then you signal left at the exit prior to your exit. If you're going to the exit which is greater than 12 o'clock, so it's beyond 12 o'clock, you go in with your right signal on the right hand side, you keep right, you keep your right signal on and then at the exit prior to your exit you signal out left. Now, what we've already done is basically we've, we've done the chart as well, which tells you what you're going to be doing. So let's assume we're here at the bottom of the roundabout at the 6 o'clock position, and we're going to the 12 o'clock position, which is directly across. What we would do is, obviously, we're coming in with no signal. We'd keep to the left. We'd hold to the left. And any cars that were approaching, if any cars were approaching us from the right-hand side there, they would have priority over us, so we would have to be careful with cars. Look, we'd be coming up, looking to the right, seeing it's clear. Keep to the left-hand side, hold to the left-hand side of the roundabout, and have no signal on. This car knows that because we've got no signal on, we are keeping to the roundabout. We are telling him that we're essentially going straight on the roundabout. We are not going off. So we're going round here. At this stage, we can switch on our left signal because we passed the point at which we can actually we can actually can turn off yeah and he knows that so we then switch on our left signal we hold our left signal we keep to our lane and we go out at the next exit well, two, there are two things we have to be really careful of yeah signaling to this person signaling for the purpose of this person extremely important also for people on our outside and the one thing we must not do is we mustn't be going to that exit on the other side in the left hand lane with no signal because because if there was a car behind us here they wouldn't be expecting you to be going round here over there because he might have come from around here and he wants to exit here and you're in the wrong lane so you must watch out that you keep to the rules when you're actually going on the roundabouts okay we're coming up to an open roundabout the leaderboard on the left hand side and just ahead of us there's this mound in the middle of the road and that's a roundabout. We're going to take the second exit so we go in with no signal. We hold to the left. Stay on the outside of the roundabout. And then as we pass the first exit we check our mirrors, put on our left signal and then go out. Approaching a roundabout, the leaderboard is on the left hand side. We are going to take the exit which is past 12 o'clock going towards Chingford Hatch. 
So we must check our mirrors, put on our right signal. We can see the roundabout sign over there telling us this is a roundabout. Look to the right nice and slow, we go into the roundabout. Keep our right signal on as we pass the first exit, we check our mirrors and then we put on our left signal and we go out of the roundabout. So if we if we had if we're on coming onto the roundabout and this time we're the white car and we've got a lot of traffic coming around from there going through the roundabout. So we have a lot of cars that are coming through here going straight through the roundabout, holding to the left, putting on their left signals, they're going out here, and they're blocking us. There's a whole range of cars coming around here. One of the things, that, one of the ways that we know we would be able to get onto the roundabout is if a big old bus, which was coming from here, was going to go out at our exit. The moment this bus comes round, it will cut off that traffic there, we know at that stage, when that bus puts on his left signal, these cars here, because he's going to be going out at that exit, are going to need to slow down. And as he comes across there with his left signal, we could use him as a shield to go onto the roundabout. But we must be careful that we identify that shield early enough that nobody's going to be pinching past the front or pinching past the back of the bus. Now, so what we've introduced here is shielding in the roundabout. So often buses coming around and turning off at our exit or big trucks coming around and turning off at our exit are shields to us that will give us an opportunity to go on to the roundabout <clears throat> and if there's a lot of traffic coming we must watch for those shields as well or if there are a number of cars who have all taken the same course going off the roundabout going round off the roundabout like that then that can also be a shield for us to be able to get on to the roundabout We're dealing with closed roundabouts. Now, on a closed roundabout, what you've always got is you've always got a junction on the closed roundabout, which basically, either in the roundabout itself, there is a change in priority with the roads coming onto the roundabout, and that can be controlled by traffic signs, traffic signals, or the road layout. This is basically a closed roundabout because there are two things that happen on this closed roundabout. First of all, the traffic can't go around the roundabout <coughs> unhindered because in the one case there's a traffic light, these are depicting a traffic light with a stop line for the traffic light, which is controlling the traffic coming onto the roundabout, <coughs> or in the further around the roundabout, there's a giveaway line to allow the traffic coming onto the roundabout priority. This junction would be a normal junction where the, the actual roundabout itself has priority over the traffic coming onto the roundabout. So the moment either there's a giveaway line or a stop line or a traffic light in the roundabout and you can't actually physically continue around the roundabout <coughs> without stopping, then um, uh, stopping for allowing other traffic to come onto the roundabout for one reason or the other becomes a closed roundabout. Now, Normally these type of roundabouts, the closed roundabouts, tend to be bigger roundabouts with special um, lane depictions where you would be looking at lanes when you go onto them and they would be the type of things that you would find at major junctions like on the A1 and the M25 where they come together, they're massive big roundabouts, some of those being about a mile in circumference or more with a whole lot of traffic lights on them controlling those, uh, those roundabouts. And, and in those roundabouts, you'd be looking at a lot of, you would be very careful with your lane discipline so that you approach the roundabout with the correct, with, with, into the correct lane when you're going onto the, uh, onto the roundabout. The further on this, another thing on this type of roundabout, again, at every one of these entry points where you come onto the roundabout, you would find that you would have the same signage you get on the open roundabout, which is the chevron with the sign pointing you in the direction that you have to go. We are going to be taking the first exit on this roundabout. 
we are going to be turning left on this roundabout so we're on the outside lane we're going to go in with our left signal hold our left signal hold with the left hand lane and then out on our left signal after we've checked our mirrors because we don't know if we've got motorcycles or cyclists on our left hand side so we must check our mirrors before we exit left signal hold to the left in the left hand lane Check our left hand mirror, exit the roundabout, hold to our lane. We're going to the exit directly at 12 o'clock. There are two other exits before 12 o'clock. You can see that the first exit goes to parking and then there's a small exit just before the A12. As we approach, we keep to this lane. Assuming that everybody peeling off into the left-hand lane is going to take the first exit. We don't need our signal because we are just going round the roundabout. We're not exiting at this stage. We hold our lane position nice and accurately. And now we can go out to the outside lane, check our left-hand mirror. And then we're going, there's one more exit to pass before we can put on our signal. It's a small exit just turning off to the houses up front here. And here the exit is coming up on the left just before the junction. And once we pass this exit, we now put on our left signal to show that we are exiting this roundabout. And our signal comes off. Okay, we're going to talk about mini roundabouts. Now, most people, when they are asked, how do you define a mini roundabout, they'll tell you, you can normally identify it by the markings on the road. This is actually an incorrect answer because a mini roundabout is, always, is not always a dot, a white dot in the center of the road. It is also um, what is really important. It must have a sign defining it as a mini roundabout because there are many mini roundabouts that actually have an obstruction in the center but I've still got this sign here. And that is what defines a mini roundabout. It is the sign itself at the junction. And it's not down the road as you approach the mini roundabout. It is at the junction itself where the mini roundabout is. So if this is covered in water or it's covered in snow or it's raining or the light is shining from the other side or it's worn, you can still know when you get to that junction, that sign tells you this is a mini roundabout. On mini roundabouts, when we approach the mini roundabout, we've always got to give way to our right. So we have to give way to the cars coming from the right hand side. So this car here, if it was going straight through, had its no signal on, it would be going straight through. It would have priority over us if we were going left or if we were going right because it's approaching us from our right hand side. Any cars that approach us from our right hand side have priority over us. If this car was here and it had its right signal on to go round the roundabout this way and we had our right signal to go that way, we would actually have priority over this car because we would be approaching the car from the right hand side. Okay, So that's the first thing we have to look at. We have to always look at where the priority lies. If we were coming down from the right hand side there in our learner car and we had a car on this side coming across here with his right signal on wanting to turn right, he would have priority over us because he's coming from our right hand side and is approaching us from our right hand side. That gives him priority over us. Any cars approaching us from the left hand side should give priority to us. Now one of the dangerous things that happen on many roundabouts, if you have a stream of cars that are coming down a main road and you want to turn right, and these cars are approaching quite quickly. You've got your right signal on, so in actual fact, no matter what signal these cars have got on, you have priority over them. The only time that you'd have to consider them is if they came into this roundabout with their right signal on. The question is, what would they be doing with their right signal on? Legally, they could be turning around on the roundabout, and it's correct to use a mini roundabout in that way. So if there were no cars on our right-hand side, these cars had no signal on, 
and this is like a main junction, a main road. A main. This is a main road section, and this is a, a, a lesser road. But it still doesn't change the priorities because it's a mini roundabout priorities. We would have priority over these guys, but the danger is that if we just take that priority, this guy might not be thinking of giving you that priority, and you would end up with an accident. So one of the things you can always do is don't go through here accepting that you have priority unless you've made absolutely sure that car is going to stop. And a good way to do this is to get to here with your right signal on. And if this car has not stopped, then wait for him to go through because invariably the next car will stop and you can go through. So that is like a holding point to determine whether you have your priority or not. Obviously if you get here, you've got your right signal on, he's clearly stopped, then you just flow straight through. You don't have to take that precaution. So approaching a mini roundabout, we can already see the leaderboard. But if you look on the roundabout, this almost looks as if this is an open roundabout. But on the left, there is a mini roundabout sign. So we're going left, mirror, mirror, left signal, and away we go. So what we are looking at here is a double mini roundabout setup. Basically this being one roundabout here, and this being another roundabout here. And often this happens when the junctions are offset from each other and uh, they, they don't know how to deal, they, they have problems putting the junctions together because they're not opposite each other. So you have two mini roundabouts right opposite each other. The most important thing to happen about, to, to remember about these, is to deal with these mini roundabouts one roundabout at a time. So you deal, you deal with this, what's happening on this roundabout, in, in as far as what is on this roundabout. You don't look at what's happening there. You can to sort of get an anticipation, but don't deal with your priority on this roundabout as a result of what's happening on that roundabout. So you deal with one roundabout at a time. Obviously, if we suddenly see someone coming through this roundabout and they've now got their right signal on, we can expect them to be coming from our right-hand side and they would have priority over us, so we would need to wait for them to go through to the right there. But we're, once we've dealt, if this car is going straight through, that's no problem for us. If the car's got his left signal on, he's essentially going left here. Yeah. He can, but we've got to be careful and watch that he doesn't change his signal and then go right. Then what, what you'll find invariably, experienced drivers will actually go left, put their right signal on, and go into the holding position to wait for an opportunity to get across there, because they realize that it is difficult to deal with a situation like that. Okay, and that is also a very good tip for you. So if you're going to go right on this second roundabout, you go in with your left signal until you get here. Once you get to this boundary line between the two roundabouts, put on your right signal, come around, and make sure that you don't go past the holding position and this, unless this car has actually stopped for you. And then you would go past because you would have priority doing that. Okay, so what we would do, we deal with the first roundabout, so this car is there, we're going across there, and here we deal with this roundabout. So now we deal with what's happening on this roundabout. And that would be our position where we would wait. If there was already a car there, if we were here and there was already a car there, we wouldn't go into the roundabout because we'd be blocking the roundabout. So we'd sit back here, wait for this car to clear, and then we would move into that position so that we don't block the roundabout unnecessarily. Again here, interesting thing about shielding here, if you're coming down this road here, and you've got a whole lot of people wanting to turn right here, they've all got their right signal on, and they've been bad boys because they're blocking the roundabout, they've got their right signals on, and they're coming along here and they're doing this. If you get a car coming from this side and he's got his right signal on, he's going to be a shield for you, you can follow through, he will block this car, you can then follow through behind him, by the time he's turned, you've gone through the roundabout and this car can carry on without any problems. Okay, we're approaching a double mini roundabout. We're approaching a double mini roundabout. We've seen the leaderboard to the double mini roundabout. Now, the secret about these is you do one at a time. We're going to go straight through both. So we, because we're going straight through, we don't need any signals at all. We don't need to signal. We are signaling, but we're not putting on our signal. 
So we approach the first round of mount, make sure it's clear, and then go through very slowly to the next point. And then there are cars leading through, so we can go through the roundabouts. Okay, we're coming up to a mini roundabout. We're in the white car, yeah, coming up to a mini roundabout. And what I want to talk about now is shielding. So what happens on the mini roundabout is we've got a football match that's just happened down that road. The Tottenham has just been thrashed by West Ham. And uh, these guys are all off to the pub to go and have a beer. So there's no break in this traffic. So we come up here, we've got our right signal on, we want to turn right. They've all got their no signals on, they're just going straight through the roundabout. Because they're coming from our right hand side, they have priority over us. Now what happens is, while we are sitting here, there's a, uh, there's a car that comes down the road and he's got his right signal on. Okay. Now we notice him coming down the road with his right signal on. Now if we, realize, if we realize what's going to happen, he is going to cut off this stream of cars coming from this side. So this stream of cars coming from this side is going to be cut off by this car because he's got his right signal on to do that. Now if we are if we are if we're awake, then when he gets here and starts his, his thing, we watch whether this guy stops. If this guy has stopped and he's going, this guy's already gone, we can go in behind him and follow him round and use him as a shield to use him as a shield. So we use him as a shield. As he goes round, he cuts off that line of traffic and we go behind him. The important thing though with shielding is always, always, always to remember. Don't use another car as a shield on a mini roundabout if he's already halfway through. Because by the time you get off the line, this guy is coming through that behind there. So the only time you can use a single car, well if you have a multitude obviously it's going to be better because they're both turning right. That's a bigger shield. But the moment you come up to this roundabout, when he starts his action, you need to be right there behind him, going around behind him as he goes through the roundabout. So often that's the alternative priority which you can use on a mini roundabout is to use other cards as shields if you're not going to interfere with their, with their progress through the roundabout. This little car over here, this grey car, wants to turn right on the junction. The, the, on his right hand side he's got a stream of cars coming from his right hand side so he's got to give priority to them. But there's a car coming from this side here who's going to be turning right. As that car turns right, this little grey car can use the black car turning right as his shield. Let's just watch that. There, this car goes on to the roundabout to start turning. That car comes in behind him and uses them as a shield. He cuts off this line of cars and he can go down the road. Very nice example of a shield. So what we're doing is we're looking at a mini roundabout and what we're going to look at is we're just going to look at what happens when we get a situation where nobody actually has priority. In actual, everybody has priority but nobody has priority. So let's just start with the basics. We're coming up to the roundabout to turn right and as we approach this, there's a car coming from our right hand side and it's got no signal on. So this car is coming down the road here. Because he's on our right, we have to stop to give way to him. But as he approaches, there's also a car coming from here, or this red car, from this side, and he's got his right signal on. So as far as this car is concerned, this car here will have priority over him because he's going to be turning that way. But this car can't proceed because we are on his right. So we have, because we're going that way, we have to give way to this car. This car has to give way to that car, and that car has to give way to that car. Now the question is who has priority? Now the DSA will tell you all sorts of fancy things about this line is thicker than that line and that road is major and all the rest of this. But in actual fact in the real terms nobody has priority because nobody will understand all those fancy line things. So what happens is it's really a question of who goes first and, and you've got to be really observant. Now let's assume you or the person who's got more guts than anybody else and you start to go. As you go, now all the priorities change. You're going and you're starting to turn. Now the, the natural thing is who's going to go next in terms of priority 
Well, obviously, that car has to wait for this car. But in reality, what will happen, this car will follow you because you're shielding this car. So this car will go, you, this car will be gone, and then this car will go. Alternatively, if one of the other cars go again, again, you, you get shielding is going to take priority. So let's assume this guy is in a real hurry. He wants to go. He goes first. He gets there. As he's going, who's going to go next? This guy is going to go because you are blocked out from the roundabout by this car, so he's shielded. So he's going to go there, you're going to, he's going to go there. By the time he's gone, he's gone past, this guy's already turned, you can go and you would go next. So again, priority took the second precedence. Now let's go back and we just examine that finally. Okay, sorry, get the cars right. We just examine that finally. This time the red card decides he's going first. If he goes first, we will follow him, go behind him. Then once we've cleared the roundabout, this guy can go. So we've got two cars approaching this roundabout. Because this guy is going past the 12 o'clock position on the roundabout, he's got his right signal on. And you're in this white car coming down to the woods this roundabout with your right signal on. So you stop here, you're turning right, and he stops here, he's turning right. Now the question here is who has priority in a situation like this? Um, and it's really simple. Because, because he, you are on his right hand side, he has to give way to you because you'd be approaching him from the right. And that would give you priority over him. Okay, we're dealing with a spiral roundabout. Now, in a spiral roundabout, what you've got to do is, a spiral roundabout literally, at every entry to the, to the roundabout, it promulgates, it starts a lane which is going to go outwards and go to exit. So if you follow a spiral roundabout and you stay in your lane, you, get, you pick up the right lane on entry, you can just follow that lane to the exit you want to be. If we, if we go in, if we're coming in, if we're this white car coming in, all we have to do is if we want to get to the third exit, we count three lanes across. This is lane one, that's lane two, that's lane three. So if we drive straight into lane three, got our right signal on, we go all the way around, we keep to our lane, going around in our lane, we will be thrown out and then we put our left signal on because that's the exit prior to our exit, we can exit onto the lane we wanted to go to. So in a spiral roundabout, all you have to do is, if you're going to the second exit, you count, you go into the second lane. So you go into the roundabout, you go into the second lane, you keep to the second lane, change your signal to left signal, that would have been no signal coming in, and you go out on the roundabout. So in a spiral roundabout, you simply follow your lane round to the end. And the question people always ask me is, how do I know it's a spiral roundabout? When you stop here and you look across from where you are, you'll see that a lane starts on the very inside of the roundabout and you will know that if a lane starts there, this is a spiral roundabout. In general terms, most spiral roundabouts, all you have to do is get in the number of lanes to which your exit are. So if you're going to the third exit, you want to go in three lanes. One, two, three. Follow that lane around and it will exit at the point you want to be. And if you need to go all the way around, then what you would do is drive in to the fourth lane. So one, two, three, four, because that's where it promulgates. And if you follow that lane round, that will drop you out at the exit you came out on. Now these spiral roundabouts can be open roundabouts. In other words, you are on priority in the roundabout. Remember just you've got to follow your lanes very carefully. Or they can be, they are, they are often marked enclosed roundabouts. They're more often used in closed roundabouts because there's more space in closed roundabouts.